Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be casting a set of four Kintsugi coasters. You'll see how I cast them, how I paint them, how I add the gold effect and how I protect them. So if that all sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. <laughs> For today's coasters, I'm using Nature Resin from Resin Pro. They have a two component option or a one component option available in the store. And I've gone for the one component option, which is just mixed with water. The other one comes with an activation fluid and yeah, that's not this one. <laughs> The mixing ratio for this is 27 grams of water to 100 grams of powder and that would be enough for one coaster as it turns out so I just needed to multiply all that by four. So I weighed 108 grams of water to 400 grams of the nature resin powder. The great thing about these kinds of casting compounds is that they take colour really well. But today I'm just keeping mine white. So really, I could have used Plaster of Paris or the stronger version which I have, which is called Stone Cast Plaster by Mold Master. So that would have been an option. The only thing is, if you're using something which is more like a Plaster of Paris based thing, you would need to seal it before painting it. Um, but yeah, you could. it is an alternative which is cheaper as well. This stuff is really good because you can paint it pretty much as soon as it comes out of the mould and so I really like it for that reason. I have found that these ones that are just mixed with water rather than the two part ones which come with the uh, acrylic polymer fluid they mix much better. It's far easier to get a smooth mixture with these water based ones. So once it was thoroughly mixed it was just a case of carefully pouring it into my moulds and today's mould as often you might see recently is from Moulds and Shapes which is my absolute favourite place to get moulds from. The quality is amazing and this is the Kintsugi mould, coaster mould from Moulds and Shapes. As always I will leave a link in the description along with a 5% discount code which is actually I can tell you that now it's LU5. Moulds and Shapes are based in the Netherlands, but they do post to most places around the world. Once I'd finished pouring, I gave the table a bit of the old karate chop action and flicked the sides around just to kind of encourage the bubbles to release from the base and come up to the top. On one of my recent videos, somebody left a really helpful comment about some kind of tool that they used to make the you know you, the worktop vibrate and for it really encouraged all the bubbles to come to the top but I can't remember what it was that he used how useless am I can't remember what he said but yeah he said it brings the bubbles up really good and yeah I know for a fact I don't have the tool that he used in fact I don't think I have anything that would vibrate enough to do that Moving swiftly on, <laughs> um, it, I left it for, oh dear, I left it for an hour before demoulding. It does take longer before you can demould these than the two part polymer um, compounds that you can get because it's just water that you're using, it does stay wet for longer, which is actually really good because you've got a much longer working time. Right then, pretty much as soon as they were out of the moulds, I started to paint them. And today I'm using a stencil and doing some stenciling. I haven't done stenciling for so long and I do enjoy it. I made my own stencils on my Cricut machine and the stencil design was in the Cricut um, image 
I can't think what it's called, design space, that's it, in the image library. So I just resized it to the size of the coaster and I printed out four of the, not printed out, <laughs> cut out four of these. And yeah, I really like them. I used stencil film. So if you've got a cricket, I would recommend getting some stencil film and making some of these because they're great. And if you don't have a Cricut, don't worry, you can purchase um, templates like this and stencils online. Uh, the only thing is it they might not be the exact size of your coaster. You might just need to use a part of a stencil that you can buy online. So as I said, I'm just using acrylic paint. I'm using blue and a little bit of white to add some variation. I'm also using a stenciling brush, which is really really advisable for stenciling because it doesn't it because it's stiff and you can bang down with it it means that you're not getting paint underneath the stencil if you used a normal paintbrush you've got a strong chance that you know the the bristles of the brush would accidentally go under the stencil but if you don't have a stenciling brush what you can do is chop the end off an old brush that you have you know a normal paint brush chop the end off so you've just got a short flat you know a bristly brush and you can use that instead of purchasing a stencil brush and there it is all done the reason I went for this design and this colour was because I wanted it to look like ceramics, you know, like an old teacup style or, you know, a bowl or something, because the art of kintsugi is a traditional Japanese art where when, you know, one of the cups or plates or anything gets broken, instead of discarding it, they fix it with a glue and a, a gild it with gold and make the... Um, place where it's been fixed look really beautiful and there's quite quite a lot of philosophy behind why they do that which is quite interesting but I won't go into that right now anyway so I've got the um, what would you call them the valleys <laughs> in the finished piece and I'm adding UV resin this UV resin is also from resin pro when applying the UV resin, you need to take it very slowly and carefully and it does help if you have a steady hand. So once you get the flow going, it's best if you can keep it going and kind of stretch it out. It's hard to explain, but you might be able to tell what I'm doing. Trying to stretch it out as it comes out of the bottle so that it, you know, the flow gets thinner and falls into the crack rather than putting too much in. And don't worry if you do go over the edge, you can wipe it off. And then once you've finished filling the valleys or cracks or whatever you want to call them, you need to put it under your UV lamp to cure. Don't leave it under for too long, just long enough for it to be cured, but to still be tacky. I did mine for about one and a half minutes. So, yeah, it if it's not, you know, still tacky, it's not going to work. <laughs> I would recommend practicing on a piece of scrap something or other with your UV resin because different UV resin brands um, cure differently. For instance, I often use the J Addiction UV resin and that one's really good because it doesn't get tacky, you know, um, a lot of people don't like that tackiness, but for this process, you need it to be tacky. And yeah, so <laughs> try out whatever UV resin you've got and make sure the length of time you've found, you know, is the one where it's still tacky is the length of time you use on your coasters. If that makes sense. I do waffle sometimes, but yeah, I think I'm getting my message across. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for the fun part, which I really love. It's so satisfying. I'm using the metallic gold glossy pigment powder from Resin Pro, which works perfectly for this because it's so, so fine. And it goes on beautifully, as you will see. And yeah, I will leave a link to that in the description, as always, along with the discount code. So you just apply it gently 
And as you can see, it just clings to the tacky UV resin. Once you've finished applying your powder, just use a big soft brush and brush away any excess powder. It also helps to polish it up a little bit and make it even shinier. Next, I decided to use my Pilot Gold Marker Pen just to go around the top edges, not the sides, just the edges, just to frame it a little bit and just give it a bit more of a finished look. And once that was done on all four coasters and they were all dry, it was time to varnish them. I took them outside and put them all on top of some plastic cups to elevate them a little bit because I didn't want to, them to stick to the surface they were on. And I sprayed them with Makota Spray Varnish. And it's a varnish which is designed for top coats on cars to give that glossy, protective sheen. And I have um, done a heat test. I didn't film it, but I did put a hot cup onto the coaster once it was sprayed and dried and it didn't mark it. It's not advertised as being heat resistant but you know when I checked it and did the test it you know it was it didn't leave any marks and it protected that gold powder very well. I would recommend doing two coats. I have another set here which didn't really turn out how they turned out in my head <laughs> but they're all right. I quite like them. Anyway, I just wanted to show you with this one how you can do the edges as well. So all I did was I dipped my finger with a glove on, of course, in some UV resin and just used my finger to paint the edges and smooth, make sure they were nice and smooth. It's best if you use your finger because you won't get any brush strokes and then also, of course, you're not going to ruin your brush either. And then I, I just cured it in the same way as before and applied the powder and you do need to be careful if you're going to be doing the edges when you varnish it to make sure you get all the edges varnished because the powder will just scratch off if you don't varnish over it to protect it but as you can see it gives you a beautiful effect on the edges now i've got a feeling now that I've used that spray varnish and said I've done the heat resistance test, people are going to be saying, can I do this on resin coasters to make them heat resistant? And my answer is, I don't know. I haven't tried it. You really would. I would suggest if you're going to get some of this spray varnish, try it on an old coaster that didn't work very well and put a hot drink on there and just see, see if it will protect it because it'll be great if it does. Right then, so here we have the finished result and I really like these. I think they look like tiles that have been smashed and fixed rather than a mould that was made to, you know, look like that style. I think it's really realistic and yeah, I'm really happy with them. So that's it for today. I really hope this video has inspired you and if you would like to purchase any of the things I've used, all the links and discount codes will be in the description. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.